Hello viewers, welcome back. This is Media Track episode 6. Thank you for being with us and joining us and giving us feedback. As usual today, I hand over to Devika to start with the lead story. Well, this time's lead uh, is indisputable, so to speak, because uh, of the floods and then after the floods came the complete, uh, you know, lack of water, water supply because the, the pipeline at Ponda, near Ponda, at Kurti near Ponda got washed off, washed away and uh, the, the, it took uh, seven to eight days for the government to reset the whole system and it start, water started trickling in into Panjim only August 22nd. That was a good seven, eight days after the whole thing happened. So there's, there's been um, a lot of criticism of the way the government handled this. First of all, in, in repairing the pipeline. Secondly, in supplying water to people who had no water at all. And uh, thirdly, in, in uh, managing a, a better system. And, and then, of course, came the blame game between the politicians. So, uh, let me just read you a few lines from the Times of India, which said, after seven days of work, the critical pipelines that supply water to Tiswadi and Ponda, 900 mm pipeline was welded and PWD released water slowly. So, uh, then the, you know, the chief of the PWD, the chief engineer, he said, uh, there were, there were many contradictory opinions. Was the contractor at fault? Had the previous minister, PWD minister, um, Sudin Davlikar, had he handled the, the department so badly that everybody became very complacent? So Pramod Savant had given a clean chit chit to the contractor and the new PWD minister, Pauskar, said that, no, it was, he squarely blamed the contractor. Then came this, you know, uh, Govind Gaude, who who said that you know some blame must be taken by the previous minister, that is Sudin Gavlikar. He didn't say some; he said most of the blame should go to him. He had been there too long, and everyone, uh, you know, all the engineers, etc., got too complacent. They didn't bother. Sudin Gavlikar, however, had an interesting thing. He blamed the contractor, who the name of the contractor is is uh, comes in the Navin Times is M. Venkata Rao Infra, Infra Projects Limited and he said that it was negligence on his part. PWD had asked the National Highway contractor in December 2018 to shift the 900 mm pipeline uh, because there was all this uh, road work going on and uh, the retaining wall which, which collapsed had been constructed 20 years ago, that's in 1999. And, uh, they, and they let the whole thing go under the new road being constructed and the weight of that road on this whole thing uh, impacted that. But there were some, um, you know, uh, there was of course uh, GM, at GMC which was very, very badly affected. Patients even had to carry water cans from home. And there was another story which said that schools, uh, some schools even had to shut down because of the water crisis when it entered the fifth day. And uh, one report in the Herald talked about how, you know, senior officers in the government, that is IS, IS officials, rather than get into the act in helping the citizens, they started actually taking away all the empty tankers to fill their own sums. And not only the, did they do that, they, they used the fire brigade people, you know, and the fire brigade equipment to pump this water. In all this confusion, there were a few, of course, uh, a few stories that, that uh, were quite interesting and there was uh, one about how the spring at Bokadavakar actually saved the day for a lot of people from Panjim who who went there even to have baths and uh, took a lot of water. So the, the headline in, in uh, Navin Times is very interesting, a spring springs to life to quench the thirst of smart city. And uh, uh, then uh, there was another story in the Times uh, which talked about the kind gesture that went viral and drew desperate calls where uh, the, the owner of this department store, he had put up a notice to say that we are happy to fill your bottles from our well. But in the end, what he got was, you know, he got call after call to send him a tanker. 
And the last story I'd like to mention is this man who came all the way from Bisholi. He brought a huge uh, amounts of, you know, he brought this huge uh, a truckload of water uh, with cans and all that to supply to patients from GMC. He said that, uh, you know, I was, I was uh, very taken up with this. His name is Prashant Chandekar and he runs a catering business in Bisholi. So he drove down all the way from Bisholi. Well, now we are sort of limping back to normalcy, but uh, there should be some accountability for the manner in which this whole crisis was handled by the that's, government. That's quite a comprehensive overview, but I think it's a very serious issue because it's like the state capital without water for a week and, you know, unthinkable now. And totally. unlike in the past, we don't even have traditional wells to lean back on. Having said that, uh, we could probably move to the next issue, which is a uh, little bit on the rains. Uh, the Goan Observer carried this uh, front cover story which said greed drowns Goa. So that's another perspective on the full thing. A lot of dramatic pictures and uh, you know from all over the state covering different aspects of it. Uh, there was another uh, story in the outstation paper which links up global warming and weather extremities. Uh, this is a clipping which comes uh, from one of the outstation papers but originally the article was in Mint by Vivek Menezes. And he talks to some scientists, including uh, you know Goans based outside Goa and uh, Helga Gomes and you know some of the prominent Indian scientists, and where they had warned about the problems that Goa could face. Uh, one online, I saw this very interesting video just today. A colleague shared it with me. It talks about uh, Avinash Tavares's video on. Uh, was it just the Tilari Dam that caused the flooding in North Goa? And uh, I would really recommend that viewers watch it because Avinash raises a whole lot of interesting uh, issues there. So maybe we'll play a small link of that. Yeah. So is this dam really responsible for the kind of flooding that happened? We have uh, this from the Hindustan Times, which wherein it says that the locals blame Maharashtra for the floods. Ministers says it rained on both sides. Now we can't blame the locals, neither the minister for this kind of explanation. The convenient scapegoat is climate change. This particular kind of flooding uh, due to release of water from the dam happened all across India. And uh, can we just blame this, uh, this release of water? Well, to an extent, yes, because uh, the water should not have allowed, to, the dam should not have been allowed to be filled so early in the rainy season. And even if they were releasing the water, they should have alerted people and given them at least a week's time in advance. But that did not happen. Uh, but then are there other reasons besides this rainfall and release of water? Now here is the uh, Tillery project. It was constructed at the foothills of Maharashtra. If you can, uh, if you can make this if you can visualize this, this is the Western Ghats and the fact that it is built here itself poses a major risk because this uh, area is eco-sensitive. Now as we go downstream, what do we see? We see a lot of patches like this. These are areas that had been cleared in the recent years for whatever reason. It could be for mining like this one. Uh, this is a stone basalt mine. Um, and or it could be uh, it, it could be for for material to build a dam like this this is at the foothill of the artillery dam you can see a lot of stone has been removed a lot of trees have been cut and this thing is visible this kind of uh, uh, activity human activity is visible everywhere as we know that the topsoil is uh, is a sort of sponge that helps absorb the water and hold it and allows it to be released slowly. If you cut down the trees and vegetation, there's nothing to hold on to the topsoil and gets washed away. The second part is the, uh, if you cut the hill, if you start, uh, whether it's for stone quarry or for creating steps for agriculture, you end up puncturing the aquifer. The aquifer is a part of the hill that stores the water. It's the inner inside of the hill. And if you create, if you if you cut any of the hills, it will drain the water from the uh, from the aquifer, and it does it will not allow water to be stored in the future. So then, what we have is we have 
a lot of rainfall coupled with the release of the dams plus nothing to hold on to it so in conclusion what do we do now that we have seen the effect the first step is the government needs to start a massive reforestation drive along the command area they need to uh, identify areas which are uh, which have settled identify settlement areas that are prone to flooding and they need to take steps to uh, to mitigate those and so that people's lives are not at risk other story which keeps coming back again and again it's the issue surrounding the kala academy mm. and its future and fate of the current building designed by charles korea so the matter is currently in the high court and it's before you know justice mahesh sonak and he has uh, allowed the intervention petition of the charles korea foundation and he's also told the petitioners that uh, they should not treat this as an advers adversary litigation and they should cooperate with each other so that the issue can be resolved in the public interest but uh, right now the color academy is virtually shut down um, there are no programs being allowed they've all been shifted out some have gone to margao uh, ravindra bhavan some are uh, being shown at uh, minesh braganza and panjim some in ponda some in ponda uh, and from the 1st of of august it it was shut down in fact only the canteen functions there but uh, now there's a big question mark on whether kala academy can be used for uh, two big events one is the film festival in november and then the serendipity arts festival which starts in december so that decision uh, minister govin gaude said is still to be taken they are still inspecting the building for its structural you know safety etc etc now the the big question is uh, is did he say kala academy would be demolished or not he has uh, denied. absolutely denied that he ever said he he's in fact said that uh, reporters should produce a, a taped version of him saying such a thing yes. he's been denying it but there's also another uh, little point you know that he's talked about uh, he said uh, that this issue should not be discussed on social media now that's you know i think it's really um not not the kind of attitude one should have people have their opinions they are they are they can take them so he said that uh, the they can come and have a debate with me i challenge them to come forward and debate with me instead of writing on social media and uh, his uh, statement has evoked strong reactions from architects and artists and everybody Uh, so right now we are in that situation where the government is still still inspecting the building and we will the report will be out in september one non political story which i just happened to come across highlighted in the kokni paper amso awaz which is from the herald group as uh, we know uh, it talks about the declining admissions in uh, government schools so for example they say 742 schools have only about 20000 or so students in that sense uh, which is actually a small number if you take it per school like you know uh, and the marathi schools have about 18000 of these and konkani has just 700 so you know i mean it raises issues of uh, standards and choice of languages and parental aspirations and a whole lot of other issues on the one hand you know in goa the educational system is different where the aided schools uh, of quite access to quite a lot of uh, wide segment section of society it's not like you know uh, private schools as we call them are very elitist not all private schools are elitist so because many are aided many uh, of a good education and then the government has to compete with this they don't seem to be doing a good job mm. i wanted to bring up uh, two small they are not small issues they are big issues as far as goa is concerned uh, we are back to the mining story and 17 months after mining stopped mining stopped in shutdown in march 2018 for following a supreme court order and the 5.34 million tons of ore will be auctioned interestingly uh, the bidders in this auction uh, among the bidders who lot of people are bidding for it and among the bidders are cesar sterilite cesar was one of the big uh, mining companies in goa vm salgaonkar then you have jsw steel and uh, then 
local ones are Timlo Private Limited, Timlo Enterprises, Dinar Tarkar. So, you know, this, this, uh, some people feel that this will restart uh, actual mining operations in a while. The second story, uh, which uh, I think is important for Goa, is uh, the one I, I saw in Navin Times. It talks about government to undertake the first ever Kazan land survey. And uh, there is no survey carried out in the existing Kazan lands in Goa in the last 30 to 40 years. And uh, we have roughly around 1,800 hectares of Kazan land, but detailed survey in the right perspective, according to the agriculture department says, would definitely help to plan the revival of these lands. So I thought that was an interesting story to take up. So Cyril uh, Fernandez in Vasco, who is uh, one of our viewers, sent us this clipping and drew, it, drew our attention to the fact that uh, the village of Chikani has got, uh, has proposed a coastal zone management plan of their own. Yeah. You know, and it's quite innovative and uh, they have their own ideas of how it should be done. So, I don't think they've asked but they offered it themselves, which is which is interesting. Now, I think even planning should come out from the grassroots. True. So, why not? And uh, if any of our viewers have something which uh, they feel we've missed out or we should be highlighting, we really welcome them to pass it on to us one way or the other through CCRT. Yeah, there was a uh, there was a corresponding report with this uh, Rico which said that Shandor covering Ram Sava also re uh, resolves to prepare its own C CZMP. So it's like it's catching on from one village to the mm. other. The other villages are also, uh, you know, g getting into the act. So another story uh, that really caught my attention is is that. Uh, the chief minister has announced that on this liberation day, Goa will get its own state anthem in Konkani. And he has urged writers and in Konkani and, and uh, you know, <coughs> people who, who compose music to pen an anthem, speaking of the freedom struggle, the unique culture and peace and harmony. And he's, uh, apparently Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra also have their own anthem. And uh, this will be played during all important occasions after the national anthem plays. In a, a, a little other aside of a story was the visit of the former Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan who was in Goa just a few days ago. And uh, he made a statement saying that Goa's liberation was delayed due to Nehru's mistake. You know how it is, uh, this government blaming the previous government and uh, the mistake was committed by the Congress party many years ago under Nehru to, to not abrogate Article 370 that is in Kashmir and in the same, same uh, sort of manner he, he, he claimed that Nehru had also made the big mistake of delaying Goa's liberation. You know, I just uh, was struck by two things which are totally disconnected, the tourist and the rains, you know. Tourism in Goa is like the monsoons, when it rains it pours and when it's dry, it's dry, like no. So uh, there is this talk, uh, an IANS report which says that uh, Goa to focus on short holiday breaks. Uh, and then there's another report from the Indian Express uh, which says that, uh, uh, you know, the price of tickets from Ahmedabad to Goa has shot up because of uh, this the seasonal rush in that sense and this is like the monsoons when you have too much of it all at one shot i don't know whether it helps or not so there was this report which says that goa has already got uh, something like its seasonal total of 116 inches of rain yeah. uh, much of it in in just in august in that yeah. sense and uh, when it rains it pours in that sense no so is it is it scientific i don't know it's not my field is it scientific to actually uh, just take the total and say okay we've got our seasonal total mm. you know how much of this water is getting ingested into the ground and how much of it is just flowing or causing a nuisance actually yeah that's true so since you were talking about tourism uh, there's this uh, one which i saw it talked about uh, the restoration of the historic fort aguada aguada fort rather for tourism and the project is, uh, this report was in the Times of India, the project is estimated to cost 22 crore, uh, 22 crore and uh, the, they, they, it will start in September. So the minister who is attending to this project, Michael Lobo, he has sparked off a bit of a controversy by saying that uh, since it is in my constituency, 
uh, uh, he would uh, sort of take charge of the project and it will house a museum and the museum should be called Manor Gopal Krishna Parikar Museum. Now some people have been uh, on Twitter uh, taking down his statement and some people are saying that it shouldn't be named either after Bandurkar or Parikar but obviously it should be named after the freedom fighters who spent so many years there. Another uh, very interesting story was um, I thought was the one that appeared in the Herald, it talked about politicians taking these huge loans, you know politicians who are so well off, who have their mm. huge bungalows and whatever, they are taking loans, uh, to, uh, loans of 30 lakhs, house loan of 30 lakhs and the car loan of uh, you know 15 lakhs and above. Now among these politicians who have taken this loan is of course the Chief Minister Pramod Savant, he's taken both the 30 lakh loan, house loan and the 15 lakh car loan and uh, even the former chief minister and still the, the uh, current MLA of course, Pratap Singh Rane also features in this list, there are quite a few of them. So the question is uh, that do, you know, are politicians the under privilege that they should be availing of these loans because they get get it at really you know throw away interest rates and apparently uh, even if you are there for one term you are eligible to it yes and two yes. two two weeks back we were discussing about their request to set up uh, you know to offer plots for them in Polvani exactly. also exactly so it's quite you know Devika I feel that uh, that stories like that you no know, hit at the hit at the reader directly at the reader's heart and at his emotions because. You feel like you no, know, these are uh, some already privileged guys, uh, you know, taking the cream off for themselves. True. But without defending them or without you know, kind of countering that report, I feel that you know, Goa's economic crisis, it is there, and you know, the debt trap and all is, it goes much deeper than this. Though, of course, people would feel very strongly about these kind of visible uh, causes, you know, in that yeah. sense. Just, yeah. just an observation. Yeah. Uh, since you were mentioning about Twitter a while back, uh, I think you know, Twitter is the closest we have to the old uh, news agencies of mm -hmm. uh, the old days, you know, in our times when we were uh, in, in the 80s working in a newspaper and we had to depend on uh, the news to flow in via news agencies. So uh, Twitter may look like, you know, kind of a lot of clutter and noise, but if you search for keywords, you can really find interesting things. So what I do, I normally search for Goa and try to see what I can come up with. I just realized that there was some uh, polar conference being organized at the Antarctic Study Center. Mm -hmm in uh, in Vasco yeah, uh, on the 20th to the 22nd of August and a lot of uh, you know people t tweeting about that and sharing uh, I don't know how much coverage it would get otherwise no because it's a kind of a niche technical subject so that's how it is and then uh, also on Twitter there is something about Goa planning to have a world entrepreneurship day sometime in the short short run which is uh, which is a challenge because while the, we need entrepreneurship I don't know how successful Goa has been in promoting actually promoting it. Yeah. Well my favorite uh, rural story for this week is uh, the one I found in the Times of India and uh, it talks of you know these these beautiful uh, waterfalls that that turn up during the monsoon but all of them are being completely destroyed with garbage bring bo being brought by tourists but uh, let me point out to you these are not tourists only from outside Goa they are also from, from Goa. So uh, let me just read a bit the Taluka that is Satari Taluka has many waterfalls most popular being Saleli, Keri, Morle, Koparde, Pali and the list goes on and uh, most most of them are located within the Madai Wildlife Sanctuary. But uh, you know the locals in Valpoi are complaining increasingly by, about the amount of garbage they, that is piling up there. Secondly, about how they, the, the tourists are just making their lives miserable by the way they just you know, drive through the, the little town and uh, cause so much traffic jam. So. Uh, the person they quote, a person called Pawar said that a few places the forest department clears the garbage but the work is carried out at a snail's pace. So I think uh, something needs to be done by the government, some decision must be taken. How do they protect these, you know, very pristine places like the Madai Wildlife Sanctuary from falling the same, into the same trap that, you know, all our beaches and all have, have gone in that way. 
talking about waterfalls i mean like uh, we may not be aware of it but there are many of these small waterfalls in different parts of uh, the interiors a friend who i forget was a doctor or an engineer he had come up with a proposal to write a book on the waterfalls and he had listed all of them it's amazing like 20 30 of them in you know tucked away in different parts of goa to just uh, give a few uh, bullet points about uh, other things happening uh, the times of india reported about the shacks and uh, the shack owners being uh, worried that they may not get licenses to start on time there's another report on uh, plaster of paris ganeshes being used and uh, concern about that because they don't uh, dissolve in water and that can cause problems you yeah. know so i mean it may be cheaper to produce but it's not eco friendly and it's it's not in keeping with the traditions also uh, then this uh, picture from the goa speaks which is a prominent facebook uh, group uh, which talks about potholes and shows potholes across the state uh, then another uh, small report about a chopper project helicopter project mm-hmm. uh, in honda in satari uh, which was uh, for which land was acquired quite some time back and they talk about completing it and taking it up now and uh, casinos uh, the congress question why uh, locals should not be allowed in casinos so this is <laughs> the opposition ruling kind of politics but i think the issue of casinos is much wider than that yeah and the last point uh, you know amso avas the konkani daily talking about the goa dairy uh, row you know the yeah, the fight yeah. over goa dairy which yeah. is a really complex and convoluted issue yeah yeah so uh, rico since you talked about that uh, copter plant at honda which uh, sripad naik uh, the minister he is the union minister of state for defense uh, he it, it was proposed uh, when parikar was uh, defense minister and uh, he said the decision will be taken in 3 months but there's there's an interlinking story to that and uh, sripad as defense uh, minister of state has been trying to get go on youth to participate in the indian air force drive you know the recruitment drive he says it's a good opportunity and uh, the the you know the the recruitment drive will be held from august 27 to 29 at the gmc athletic stadium in bambuli and uh, another story i just wanted to quickly sort of talk uh, the government is talking of improving the e visa facility at the airport so uh, you know to facilitate mm-hmm. the arrival of tourists and before so. we forget something i almost missed uh, this young lady called karishma is selected for spain to represent uh, to represent you know the state the country in f- uh, women's football yeah. which is a real positive story uh, a, a suspected dengue death i don't know what what happened of that later and of course the tejpal trial of this uh, famous yeah. uh, sex, sexual harassment case it's still going on and uh, and lastly this dispute between the abvp and the bharatiya yuva janta morcha in the goa university i thought they were both uh, they on the are, same side they are they are both part of the bjp but in this case i don't know why they they seem to to be in different sides of the of uh, of the contest and one of them is actually being supported by the nsui which is which is a, a congress student which front which is a congress yes. student front it's get it gets curious and curious as the saying goes absolutely uh, of course on a slightly uh, sad note the passing last week of percival norona uh, who was 96 as someone called him the sage of fontanes mm-hmm. uh, i think there was this very nice obituary written by dr dr dice dr louis dice where he noted his uh, role in uh, astronomy and uh, conservation yeah and two other things which i didn't know much of myself uh, his uh, interest in goan furniture and numismatics that's true yeah so uh, percival was uh, this government uh, official who straddled both uh, both uh, regimes yes. pre 61 and post 61 that's true and he was always concerned uh, bachelor and uh, always knowledgeable very ready to share his knowledge with anyone and his house as uh, dr dice describes although he, it was very clean and methodological it was like you know a treasure trove of different kinds of artifacts uh, he had a amazing book collection you mm. know I, i i wonder what will happen to that i hope it gets a good home in where somewhere where it will be preserved yeah i'm sure you know. his family will will yeah, uh, do like, that yeah that's true yeah. and uh, you know i mean like uh, a few years back fundasam orient had felicitated him and brought out mm. a book in in his honor and i think you know as a society we sometimes don't recognize our own when they are alive yeah and we wait till it's too late but uh, people like him need to be celebrated not mourned in that sense he lived a full life he did he was quite active till a yeah. long time yeah.
So on that note, uh, our time is up and the clock reminds us that we have to wind up. So we will look back to you in another week from now and please send your feedback and comments. Most welcome. Thank you so much. See you next week. <laughs>